Hello and welcome to another episode of the Digital Painter Vidcast. My name is Terry Danich Kimiak II and I am your Digital Painter and BOOM! Green screen is behind me once again. Woot woot! Welcome back to our series on Procreate for the iPad. We are continuing along here, just jogging, jogging, jogging along. And this week we're going to be looking at the layers panel. But before we get that, a couple of things. First off, you can tell, hopefully, that I'm in a very good mood. Why am I in a good mood? I shouldn't be. Yesterday, my, er, what you, today, uh, yesterday, my daughter had to get stitches, three of them, in the chin, because she decided that she would throw her chin at the stairs. And then today, my or yesterday at the same point, my cell phone completely went kaput, so I had to buy a new cell phone. So as of right now, nothing seems to be going right, but the one good thing is the weather has finally calmed down. It's nice and cool outside, very comfortable in my house, so I'm feeling good. And so I'm trying to bring you a little bit of happiness to this vidcast that you're watching here in video format. All right, enough of that. Okay, so we've got Procreate here, right? Sarcasm. That's that's my shirt. Uh, we've got Procreate here, and we remember our, our lovely young lady. I gave her a name last week, and I can't remember what it is now. Uh, but we've uh, I've opened up the layers palette, and you'll see that I have three layers. One is the background. The background comes with any anytime you open up a new program, you get a background. You can indeed turn the background out, and you can see, boom, we get a transparency, so we don't want that right now. You'll see my paint layer is one layer. And then my pencil layer is another layer. I do use multiple layers. Now a note on layers is depending on how big your image is will depend on how many layers you can actually create. So for example, if we go back to the gallery and we create a new image, we'll see here that the 4K, you can only create 10 layers, but at 1080p, you can have 44 layers and A4, seven layers, you know. Uh, you could create your own custom. So if we were to do our custom, let's create a 4,000 by 4,000. You're looking at only two layers, okay? So uh, depending on what it is you're creating and how big you're creating will have an effect on your layers. Okay, so we'll bring back to our lovely lady here. Remember, this is only 10 layers. Can't do more than that on this image. So I already have three. And we're going to go ahead and add a layer. To add a layer, it's merely the plus button. Boom! Layer. Now you can indeed rename these layers. See the rename? What I did there is I touched the layer. And you can see rename, fill, or merge down. We can rename this. We'll call this new TARDIS. I'm feeling very, uh, very Doctor Who-ish right now, okay? So now we have our new layer. Again, tapping it will also let us fill it. If we wanted to fill it, it fills it with the color that is already in your, I'm gonna undo that just so you know, okay? So if I were to choose a different color, say, let's pick uh, this color right here, and we come in and we tap and we fill it, it will fill it with that color. Okay, we're gonna undo that again. And then of course you have the merge down and essentially what the merge down does is it combines two layers together. Now note on that, you can use the merge down or if you wanted to, you can actually just use your two fingers and pinch layers together. So right now I'm gonna actually pinch layer one, new TARDIS and layer two. I'm going to be touching with my fingers, uh, layer one and layer two, and I'm gonna be squeezing them together. Yep. If I can get that, there we go, squeeze together, and now we have one layer. I'm going to undo that so that they are separate again. Again, it takes a little bit of a pinch, and it's just voomp, and voomp, and there, I <laughs> did those two. Now, merging down might be the easier way, especially if you've got big fat fingers like I do, okay? And my fingers are big fat, and they don't like my me okay okay let's so let's look at a couple other things how do we turn on and off our layer the circular dot on the left hand side if you press it it will turn it on and off 
Okay. You'll see on the right hand side the letter N and a circle. If you tap that, that is where you change your blend modes. If you ever used Photoshop or ArtRage or any of those other programs, you have blend modes and layers. Okay, N means normal. You can do light and screen, add color dodge. You'll see on the bottom you have dark and light and contrast difference and color. Something you can play with, okay? That's not, we're not going to go into that. Uh, in fact, one of my mini classes that I'm going to be doing uh, deals with using some of these layers as you create an image, but that's not, it's neither here nor there, especially with this image, which wouldn't be very useful, okay? Next up, if you slide your layer to the left, you'll see we can select, copy, duplicate, delete. So if we click select, Oh, there's nothing on that layer, so let's try this layer. We click Select. It selects everything that is within that layer. Okay, we're going to deselect that for now. If we click Copy, the selection has been copied, and we could very easily paste it on a new, uh, a new area. Oops. Which we're not going to do right now. Okay. You can duplicate the layer. So now I have two of the same. Or you can delete the layer. Okay. If you slide your layer to the left with one finger, you will lock your alpha. Boom. Our alpha is locked. It does four little corner tabs in the layer. And what that means is if I switch to a paintbrush, and I'm going to switch to a garish color, blue, you'll see that as I'm painting, I can only paint on what is already down. Now I'm going to undo that and undo it again. This is really actually quite lovely if you want to change your pencil outline. So I'm going to actually switch to my pencil layer. I'm going to lock that. And we're going to give our pencil kind of a brown. I'm going to grab a paint, a round brush. I'm going to make it really big. So it's only painting what is already there. It will not paint outside that. Okay, so that's what the alpha lock is. And then you can slide it again to unlock it. If you use two fingers, it turns it into a reference layer. Okay, what does that mean? Okay, so I'm going to turn off that. I'm going to turn this into a reference layer. And then you'll see that by picking another layer, that is now the purple layer. I'm going to turn it back on. And if I come in and I fill, want to do fills, for example, so I'm going to fill her neck. I'm in pencil mode. Those are pencil lines. It's going to go right through that stuff. And we're going to undo and see if I can't get this. There we go. So I've dropped my threshold down on my fill, but it's using the pencil lines from the pencil layer as right there. It's referring to those. Okay. So uh, that is how the reference layer can be used. Now, it's better if you have an inked image rather than a penciled image. So if I went in, so for example, why don't we grab an inking brush. We'll switch to black. That, that inking brush is terrible, so we're gonna grab a different inking brush. There we go. Okay, good. So now, if we turn, and we gotta undo that, put us on this layer. Now that we've done that, that purple layer is our reference layer. If I turned off the alpha lock, oh, not the alpha lock, turned off the reference layer, and I tried to fill in just the circle, it fills the entire thing. But if we turn on the reference layer, and we try to fill, it only fills within the circle. So look at that. So that's what the reference layer, it's great if you're doing comics or something like that, because you've got something inked out, you want to get your flat colors in first, boom, 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 use it as a reference layer, but it keeps it on a separate layer. So you can turn off the reference layer and you can see it is on a distinct separate layer. Okay. I'm going to turn that off. Again, that's two fingers sliding to the right. Now, you can 
move layers around. So if you press on a layer and hold, you'll see it pops out and you can reorder it like so or like so. Okay, or you can do this and you can delete it. Boom. We actually need to erase this. I'm on the wrong layer. There we go. What was I using as an eraser? Oh yeah, we were doing texture the other day. Okay, let me switch to nice hard airbrush. There we go. Oh, I can erase it very quickly. All right. Now, as you can see here, we still have the merge down, but we also have the clear. So if there is something in your image, you can actually clear it. I'm going to undo that. So if you don't like how a layer is turning out, you can completely clear it. Merge down, you can select the contents, etc. Okay. So this is your layer palette. Very, very useful. I like to keep a lot of my things on separate layers because it makes for much easier working, uh, more manageable for me. Um, so as you can see, even here, my pencil outline is on a separate layer than my painting. And usually I would have like the eyes and the skin on separate layers as well. Uh, one of the other things, for example, say we're in here, right? I'm going to add a layer underneath. I'm going to just do a little bit of painting with kind of a, a grayish. I'm going to edit undo that. There we go. And apparently I made the brush really, really big. Come in here, right? So we're just going to put in a little bit of And then if we then add a layer over top of that with, say, a red, you could. this is the point that you'd come in and you change that normal to either light and screen. You could do darken, linear burns. You could do an overlay, you know, exclusion. You can play with all of those and do different things, okay? So that's... And we're not going to obviously keep those. Very easy to delete layers. Boom, boom, done. So that is the layers in, Pro in Procreate. Again, very useful. Really like the ability of using layers. Next week, we're going to move into the color wheel and what the color wheel can do, how it can help you, how you can adjust it, and how you can use it in your paintings. And that uh, will actually bring us to the end of the very basic coverage of Procreate for the iPad. So really exciting stuff. A couple things. First off, a uh, big thank you to everybody who comes on here. They watch the videos. They, uh, they, they leave comments. I do greatly appreciate it. I think it's uh, wonderful having you all uh, come in, pop in, and uh, say hello. So uh, big thank you uh, for all of that. A reminder that if you're watching this on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. I love having new subscribers. I love hearing from subscribers. And, um, you know, if there's anything that you want me to do specifically, you let me know and I will do it. I am a big fan of doing things that you guys want to see, uh, which for me is what's important. Okay. Uh, big shout out to uh, Jane, who is a, uh, a new Patreon subscriber who's come back. Um, she had to take some time off. So a uh, big hello, big thank you, uh, for coming and visiting and, uh, Really, really excited about having you back with us um, just recently added uh, this month. So really exciting stuff there. Also, big hello and thank you to Frank, who is uh, another one, uh, falls under the $5 uh, amount. Big thank you to you as well. So uh, I want to thank you guys so much for... Uh, coming in here and helping to support uh, as we grow. We're very close, very, very close to getting to that $100 where everybody that is a Patreon subscriber at the $100 will get a uh, a printed out postcard of a digital painting that I will do. So very excited about that. All right, that's it for this week. 
we'll continue next week and uh hopefully it's as nice it is is today and i can continue to be in a very happy mood so take care keep painting and uh i'll see you soon